Okay, so <laughs> this is the developer update for April 2021. All right, let's start with this first. Uh, killer updates, the nightmare. For some time, the nightmare has stood out from the crowd with a particularly high kill rate, averaging roughly three kills per match. With that in mind, we've made some slight tweaks to bring him closer in line with the rest of the uh, roster. We've de decreased his movement speed while placing a snare to four meter per second. Previously, no speed change and reduce the maximum number of placed shares. Snares, sorry, from uh, 8 to 5. Likewise, the maximum number of dream pallets has been reduced from 10 to se uh, 7. Uh, I get, okay, so I, I suppose this is a nerf, but again, this is still not going to make Freddy more fun to play against. But let's continue. A handful of add-ons have also received changes. Add-ons which previously reduced action speed now make various actions louder speed. Repairing generators, grunts of pain, and footsteps. Black box also has a brand new effect. When an exit gate is open, it is blocked for sleeping survivors for the next 10 seconds. Okay, so they've changed an add-on. Alarm clocks have also received some tweaks to make their effects clearer and more rewarding. Using an alarm clock will now make you fully immune to sleep, including sleep caused by a killer hit for 30 seconds. This effect is now shown on the HUD by turning your sleep timer yellow and having it, it tick down. Now that would that sounds a little bit broken if it's for the entire game, <laughs> like going for one, uh, like to wake yourself up once and then all of a sudden you're completely immune. Nah, I don't think that's the case. It does say for thirty seconds. Let's move on. With these changes, we hope to promote more strategic use of his dream traps rather than placing them constantly during a chase, as well as encouraging survivors to seek out and use alarm clocks. We'll monitor his performance closely and adjust where necessary going forward. The Demogorgon. Our focus for the Demogorgon is to give it more mobility with its portals. We've made the following changes to base portals. Increased speed while in a portal. Reduced cooldown after exiting a portal. Increased undetectable length after exiting a po portal. The portal. On top of these changes, we've had done a complete pass on the Demogorgon's add-ons to make some of the lesser used ones more appealing. Okay, so I can already say that I don't think this is going to change anything. His power is weak, period. Like, just changing, just tweaking a little bit, like, with the portals is not going to change anything. But these, I don't know, these changes are not big. That's time we have not changed the Hunter Space Kit. We have, however, done a pass on our add-ons. Uh, fix dying upon the victim. Wait. We have changed the Hunter Space Kit. We, we have, however, done a pass on her add-ons to bring them up to modern standards. Yes, this includes the infamous series and that. A wrap taken from the dead soldier, it provides protection and support to the ankle and lower leg. The huntress moves 4.6 meter per second when she has no hatchets. Mm. The blade is warm and re reverb reverberating <laughs> the entity's power. Inflicts dying upon the victim. Caps maximum carried hatchet as one, regardless of the effects of other add-ons. It's still broken. <laughs> look, 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 look. I will say this, okay? What what this add-on is saying is that even if you carry that uh, infantry belt, whatever, the one that increases hatchets numbers carried, that if you have this on, it's gonna completely dismiss the other one. You know that that's what it's saying. The problem is that this add this hatchet is already like OP, or this add-on. So. People have been complaining about the fact that they haven't removed the... Um, or people don't want Insta Down add-ons pretty much. Alright, and the twins increased cooldown and successfully downing a survivor with Victor from 3 to 5 seconds. Camera control is now immediately restored when taking control of Charlotte. Char Charlotte? Charlotte? Silencing cloth increased undetectable duration to 20 seconds upon the taking control of Charlotte. Iridescent pendant increased... Okay, so wait, these are add-ons, right? Okay, so this is something I saw, like, just for a glimpse, and I think I like this change. It has come to our attention that some of blah blah hate small piles of bones to aid you in your totem destroying mission. We made some long requested changes to small game. Small game now shows the number of remaining totems as tokens on the perk. The detection range decreased by five for each totem cleansed. Small game no longer detects killer traps. That's a fair trade, because it's like... You can have like all different survivors doing different things. So you can ask like one of your friends like, oh, hey, you want to equip small games? And like, let us know how many we have and blah, blah. You know, that, that's that's kind of cool. Um, 
but I still think that maybe they should keep it in the game, like for everyone to see, like a base thing, you know? Lucky Break. Lucky Break now hides scratch marks in addition to blood pools to help you lose the killer. To compensate, the total duration of, has been reduced to 70, 80, or 90 seconds. So, I don't know. I still never liked Lucky Break. I, I, I don't see why I wouldn't use something like Iron Will, which is permanent compared to this one. Soul Guard. A small change here. Soul Guard ha now has a cooldown of 30 seconds after activating. Realistically, this won't affect the vast majority of chases. Or cases. This, uh, this change is purely to prevent stacking healing speeds and soul guard from getting out. No, this is so. Soul guard is a meme, or should I say meme build? It's kind of like a meme build. I don't see. I don't understand why they would touch this one, because DBD doesn't. It doesn't really have that many, uh, like meta perks or perks that are like super super good or unique. You know. What we do have is meta perks, and then we have meme perks, like Soul Guard. If you combine that with, uh, like we did on one of our videos where we were like constantly healing ourselves against Freddy. You guys remember that? That was a meme build. It, it was pointless, honestly. If if a Swift goes into a game like that and uh, uh, uses Soul Guard and then like a bunch of um, healing builds, and we just like heal each other constantly, like it's... We are not getting any gens done. We're just like delaying the inevitable. It's like I, I don't see why why they would nerf Soul Guard. Open handed. Take two for open handed. We've slotted this update back in for the upcoming PTB. Open handed now has an increased effect 8, 12, 16 meters, but no longer stacks with itself. This makes the perk more appealing on its own without needing to stack it with other survivors in the I don't even know what open handed does. I'm sorry. I I, I don't know. Okay, Zanshin Tactics. A very straightforward change. Zanshin Tactics is now permanently active and also has a large, larger range. That's a buff. That is a buff. That's, uh, that can be good for killers who are learning the game. But I don't know. Then again, I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is like one of those like it's good for people to use at the beginning when they're learning the game. But aside from that i never saw zanshin tactics as a good perk for a killer it's, it's just a wasted slot in my opinion uh, it increases your aura perks that's what it does open-handed okay okay mm. okay bar time to remove some confusing in in how do you say that in intricacies in intricacies i don't know how to say that with how bar time interacts with some killers and the oblivious status effect we have removed the terrorator's condition from the perk to compensate we have reduced the duration of the endurance effect, 8, 10, and 12 seconds. What? What does Borrow Time have to do with endurance? Okay, Object of Obsession. This PTP also features the newly reworked Object of Obsession. Anytime your aura is revealed to the killer, their aura is revealed to you and gain a 2, 4, 6% bonus to healing, repairing, and cleansing speed. If you are the Obsession, your aura is revealed to the killer for 3 seconds every 30 seconds. This new version has a few benefits. Being able to track the killer, being able to deduce with aura reading perks the killer is using when object of obsession activates, being able to attract the killer and then sneak away before they can get there. With these changes, we hope to make object of obsession a more fun and interactive perk for both sides. But this killers, they don't really like this though, do they? All right, so then we have some minor stuff. Toolboxes. The chance to receive a skill check while using a toolbox has been increased. This change makes toolboxes feel more interactive while they're in use, and it's totally not because the lead designer had a skill check challenge and got unlucky three matches in a row. Hatches. Another small tweak. I don't like this. Get rid of this. Get rid of keys. Like, just delete them from the game. They have no purpose. You have nerfed Morris, which was like a really cool thing you did. Um, but keys, they have no place in the game, honestly. They're, they just make it really boring. It's like just keys. Hot update for the 4.7.0 PTB. We have made some more changes to the HUD, this time focusing on the visibility of killer powers on the survivor portraits. In this update, we have made improvements to the Doctor's Madness effect, also made it easier to differentiate between different levels of madnesses. The Nightmare, Stream, World effect, and Sleep Timer, the Plague's Infectious Meter, Stock Meters, and Ghost Visitor. Okay, additionally, we've also adjusted the survivor portraits so they no longer obstruct the bottom of power indicators. Okay. Struggle update. Oh yeah, yeah this is the one they, they tweeted before. Uh, it's an ongoing um, effort to improve accessibility. We have changed 
the way struggling works starting uh, in the ptb rather than needing to mash a button survivors in their second hook stage will now receive occasional skill checks the success zones are fairly large as we are not looking to make struggling more difficult deadly at this time missing one of these skill checks will remove a chunk of your struggle meter if you do not attempt to hit the two consecutive skill checks you will be immediately sacrificed as you receive skill checks your struggle meter will gradually decrease at the same rate as before our goal with this change is to make struggling more accessible to players with repetitive strain injuries while keeping struggling as an interactive mechanic. <laughs> no, they didn't talk. Oh my god. You know, I really wanted them to... Um, I, I made a tweet before, um, like a week ago. I said... Um, uh, you know how we, like, we all constantly hold in like mouse button 1 to repair gens, uh, cleanse totems, heal... They should make like a click to do that rather than hold in because there's a lot of people that struggle with that i don't even want to play like no offense but you you do damage your mouse when you do that like if you're constantly holding something in it does wear out over time all right graphical update cold wind cold wind farm i was going to put a funny intro here but it was too corny really <laughs> in case you missed it the next realm Stated for a graphical update is the Coldwind Farm. Check out some concept art from the upcoming rework. Pretty. Pretty, pretty. I like. It looks... No, actually... Wait, I don't know. Let, uh, too bad we can't really see the... Or can we see the coin? Hmm. But wait, uh, so they're th this map is going to get brighter then. Right? Mm. Yep, I guess that was it. On that note, we've re reached the end of this developer update. All of the changes mentioned above will be avail available for testing in this week's player test build starting April 13th. We look forward to reading your feedback once you've had a chance to try them out. <laughs>